So again, this isn't a quadratic equation because I have x to the third power. So this would make it a cubic equation, which is just a little bit more complicated. Still, just like a quadratic equation, the strategy remains that I'm going to try to collect all of my terms on one side of the equation and just let the other side of the equation just be 0. So like, I could rewrite this as x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5 equals 0. That way the right hand side is 0. And what I'm going to do next is pretty important. This is a brand new strategy here. I'm going to group the first two terms together like this. And then I'm gonna write plus and I'm gonna group the second two terms together like this. Minus 5x minus 5. And now for each of those little groups, for the first two terms and for the second two terms, I'm going to ask myself, what's the greatest common factor? So for just the red grouping, the x cubed plus x squared, the greatest common factor would be x squared. x squared, yeah. So if I factor out an x squared, what I'm left with is x plus 1. And then for this second group here in blue, if I want to factor out a greatest common factor, I should factor out negative 5, yeah. And getting out that negative 5 leaves me with what? X plus 1. Yeah, x plus 1. So again, whenever you factor things out, you can always try to check your work mentally. Just say, what would it look like if I distributed the negative 5 or if I distributed the x squared? So distributing the negative 5, for example, would be like negative 5x, and then the negative 5 and the plus 1 give you negative 5. That checks out. So doing good so far. Um, now, what I have here on the left-hand side is I've got two terms, one of them being in red, the other in blue. And these two terms have a greatest common factor themselves. Both of these terms have the factor x plus 1. And so now I can factor out this x plus 1. And that will look like x plus 1. And after factoring out the x plus 1, what I'm left with then would be x squared plus a negative 5. Yeah, okay, good question. That's a good question. So let me try to explain. If instead of x plus 1, let's say I had, let's say I have the number 3, just for example. Um, if I had x squared times 3 plus negative 5 times 3, and I were to factor out the 3, I could rewrite this as 3 times x squared plus negative 5. Um, because, again, I'm multiplying each term by 3, but I could just take 3 times the sum of those two terms. And now x squared, sorry, x plus 1, I realize it's not just a number. You've got a variable in there, but you can treat it the same way. Since it's multiplying both of the terms, you can just add the terms and then multiply. Uh, you, can, you can imagine um, also... <laughs> since I've said this already, you could uh, imagine what it would look like to actually multiply this out. What if we did x plus 1 times oops, x squared plus negative 5 times x plus 1? And I mean, this is good test taking strategies, right? If you're, if you're not quite sure of what the step you did and you want to check your work, this is an excellent way to check your work and make sure everything's going well. Um, that would be negative 5x. This would be x squared, and that would be negative 5. 
So adding up these boxes, what I would get is x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5. And that is what we had up here, right? x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5. And so that would be a, a way to check your work. If you're not really sure of that step, you want to make sure you did it right, you could multiply these factors back out and just make sure that you <laughs> get what you started with. Good question. So now what I have in that bottom purple line is I have a linear factor, x plus 1, times a quadratic factor, x squared plus negative 5. And rather than writing plus negative 5, I could just write minus 5. So let me just simplify that. And that x squared minus 5, it doesn't look like a difference of squares, just because 5 isn't a nice square. It's not like 4 or 9 or 16 or whatever. But it kind of still is a difference of squares. What if I wrote the square root of 5 squared? The square root of 5 squared is 5, and so this is sort of like a difference of squares. And if you remember the pattern of how you like to factor difference of squares, I can factor that into x plus square root 5 times x minus square root 5. And that is equal to 0. And here, you can tell that I'm going to end up with three solutions now. One solution is going to come from setting that equal to 0. And then my second solution is going to come from setting this equal to 0. And then my third solution I'm going to get if I set this third factor equal to 0. And so my solutions are going to be x equals negative 1, negative square root 5, yeah, and, <laughs> and positive square root 5, yeah. So three solutions, because I had a cubic equation. And this, by the way, this whole procedure where I uh, basically put everything on one side of the equation and then I grouped them as the first two terms and then the second pair of terms here. And then I pulled out a greatest common factor and then I pulled out a greatest common factor again. That strategy has a name. And if you took a high school algebra class, maybe you've heard of this, but it's called factoring by grouping. And factoring by grouping is a strategy that we use to uh, solve cubic equations. So it doesn't apply to quadratic equations, it doesn't apply to quartic equations, it only applies if you have a cubic equation, like this one. That's when you're going to try to do factoring by grouping. Any questions? Yes? Ooh, that is a very good question, yeah. So saying plus negative 5x is the same thing as saying minus 5x, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm really glad you asked. If you, if you leave this as a minus sign, and then you put the parentheses 5x minus 5, uh, that's going to that's gonna create a mistake because, well, let, let me show you. It's a really good question. Uh, the problem comes because a lot of students will make a mistake whenever you're trying to distribute and keep track of your minus signs. So like what if instead I were to look at this purple equation up here and I rewrote it as x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5. And again, you know we're grouping so you put the parentheses in and you do it like this. What we would end up with is take the factor x squared out, and then you'd have x plus 1. And then you'd be like, OK, the greatest common factor is 5. So I'll pull out a 5 and end up with x minus 1. And now we can't go any farther because we have an x plus 1 factor over here and an x minus 1 factor over here. So these don't have that greatest common factor. We can't pull it out the same way that we did on that line. And not only do you get stuck doing it that way, but it's actually 
you know, this is an incorrect way to write things, this equation right here, because it's implying that you're going to distribute that minus sign to those terms inside the parentheses. And so looking at this, what it's implying is minus negative 5. And so you actually get something different than what you started with. So really good question. Um, to be like careful and to very, you know, very carefully keep track of all my minus signs, I always introduce that plus sign and I make sure that that middle minus sign stays inside the parentheses.